help produce and present the application to the FISA court to secure a warrant to spy on Americans associated with the Trump campaign. Uh, Congressman, I'm not prepared to discuss anything about uh, a FISA process in this setting. All right, so no answer there. That was Republican Congressman Jim Jordan pressing FBI Director Christopher Wray during a House Judiciary Committee hearing yesterday. A lot of that you watch live here on Fox. The congressman focused on Peter Strzok, the top FBI official who took a senior spot on special counsel Robert Mueller's team. Mueller later kicked Strzok off the team for sending anti-Trump te text messages. Congressman Jim Jordan wanted to know if Strzok also worked to obtain a warrant to surveil the Trump campaign during the 2016 election. Here now is Congressman Jim Jordan. So he didn't take your question on that at that point. Do you get another bite at the apple? How does this work? Mr. Rosenstein will be there next week. We'll ask him some of the same type of questions. They can give us what they took to the FISA court. We're the, we're the Judiciary Committee. We're the committee with jurisdiction over the Justice Department. Let the Congress see if, in fact, you took this this National Enquirer garbage report called a dossier, if you, in fact, use that as the basis to securing warrants to spy on Americans, let us know if that happened or not. I think it did. And if it did, what's the accountability? What happens there? Well, Harris, understand what took place. This is a Democrat finance, Democrat National Committee, Clinton campaign, paid the law firm, who paid Fusion GPS, who paid the MI6 agent, Christopher Steele, who paid Russians for this document, for this report. So it's opposition research paid for by the Democratic National Committee and was the FBI working with that Democrat National Committee to take this document, dress it all up, take it to the FISA court so they could go after the other party's campaign and the other party's nominee. If that happened, mm -hmm. that is as wrong as it gets. And everything points to that. It certainly looks like that's what took place. So there was potentially a crime with the Russians, but what you're saying is it happened among the Democrats and it happened within this sort of uh, structure at the FBI, which is very debilitating for that agency. No, you're exactly right, Harris. So we have Mr. Mueller, who's investigating supposed coordination between the Trump campaign and Russians to influence the election. But we know for a fact the Clinton campaign paid Russians to do what? Influence the 2016 presidential election. We know that happened. Now what we're trying to figure out is, did the FBI help him? Did the FBI help him? And it sure looks that, because here is, here is Peter Strzok. He's the guy who ran the Clinton investigation, interviewed Abedin, interviewed Mills, interviewed Clinton. He's mm -hmm. the guy who wrote the exoneration letter, changed the terms from gross negligence, a crime, to extreme carelessness. He's the guy who launched the Russian investigation. He's the guy who interviewed Mike Flynn. He gets picked by Mueller to be on his team, and we're supposed to believe he got kicked off because he sent some anti-Trump messages? As, wow. I said, as I said yesterday in the committee, if you get kicked off the Mueller team for being anti-Trump, there wouldn't be anybody left on the Mueller team. Right. And, so and it I has to you, be more. I, I heard you say that. I was watching at the time. You know, I'm a fan of C-SPAN. So I tuned in at that moment, and I saw you say that, and it was quiet there at the hearing. And I, I'm just wondering where you take that, because if that's, if that's the case, Christopher Wray is the man that President Trump chose to be in charge of the FBI. He's the man that he tweeted about uh, with regard to the FBI now yeah. being in tatters. What happens next? Well, I think the FBI, the rank and file, the vast majority of the, of, the, of the people who work there are great people. But there was this special group. Remember Andrew McCabe's email where he talks about this select group at the top who ran the Clinton investigation. McCabe, Strzok, Comey, that's where the concern is. And so when the president talks about tatters, he's talking about the FBI and tatters. He's talking about that select group at the top. He's not talking about the rank and file agents who were busting their tail, as Mr. Ray said yesterday, doing their job. He's talking about this select group at the top who looks like there was political concerns that factored into all this and that they may have coordinated with one party to go after the other party. That is never supposed to happen in the United right. States of America. You use the word special. Congressman Big stepped away from the hearing that you all were in yesterday so that he could tell me that he had a few questions that he and others wanted to ask. Uh, Congressman Getz and, and Gomart were on the list who wrote a letter and the word special was at the heart of it. Yeah. I'm curious as we go forward if we're going to get some some definition about how the FBI used the word special. Well, I think we will. But one of the things that needs to happen is we need to we need to depose Peter Strzok. We need to talk to the the news that broke yesterday. Bruce Orr meeting with Christopher Steele in the middle of the campaign. The head one of these key guys at the Justice Department, and then met with Glenn Simpson, who heads Fusion GPS after mm -hmm. the election. We need to talk to Mr. Orr. We need we need to have Mr. McCabe come in front of the Judiciary Committee. Mm. And as I said, Mr. Rosenstein is going to be there next week, and he's going yeah, to get some of the is, same type of questions. This is not going to wrap soon. 
Uh, special or special treatment was the question. And, and I know you'll follow the trail on this and bring the facts. We appreciate your time and look forward to having you. you back as this goes forward next week. Thank you, Representative Jim Jordan. Thank you, Harris. Director, was Agent Peter Strzok the former deputy head of counterintelligence at the FBI? I don't remember his exact title, but I believe that's correct. And he's the same Peter Strzok who was a key player in the Clinton investigation, the same Peter Strzok who interviewed Cheryl Mills, whom Abedin participated in the Clinton, uh, Secretary Clinton's interview. And he's also the same Peter Strzok who now we know changed Director Comey's exoneration letter, changed the term gross negligence, which is a crime, to extreme carelessness. Is that the same guy? Well, Congressman, I don't know every step that uh, the individual you mentioned was involved in, but certainly I know that he was heavily involved in the uh, Clinton and he, email investigation. Thank you. And, he, and is, it, it's, is this the same Peter Strzok who helped, uh, was a key player in the Russian investigation, and the same Peter Strzok who was put on Mueller's team, uh, special counsel Bob Mueller's team? I certainly know that he was working on the special counsel's investigation, whether or not he would be characterized as a key player on that investigation. That's okay. really and not this, for me to say. And the same Peter Strzok that we learned this past weekend was removed from the special counsel team because he exchanged text messages with a colleague at the FBI that were displayed a pro-Clinton bias. Is that accurate? Yes. Talk about the same guy. Okay. Yes. Well, here's what I'm not getting. Peter Strzok is selected to be on Mueller's team after all this history, put on Mueller's team, and then he's removed for some pro-Clinton text messages. I mean, there are all kinds of people on Mueller's team who are pro-Clinton. There's been all kinds of stories. PolitiFact reported 96% of the top lawyers' uh, uh, contributions went to Clinton or Obama. But Peter Strzok, the guy who ran the Clinton investigation, interviewed Mills, Abedin, interviewed Secretary Clinton, changed gross negligence a crime to the term extreme carelessness, who ran the Russian investigation, who interviewed Mike Flynn, gets put on Mueller's team, and then he gets kicked off for a text message that's anti-Trump. If you kicked everybody off Mueller's team who was anti-Trump, I don't think there'd be anybody left. So here, here, there's gotta be something more here. It can't just be some text messages that show a pro-Clinton, anti-Trump bias. There's gotta be something more. And I'm trying to figure out what it is. But my hunch is it has something to do with the dossier. Director, did Peter Strzok help produce and present the application to the FISA court to secure a warrant to spy on Americans associated with the Trump campaign? Uh, Congressman, I'm not prepared to discuss anything about uh, a FISA process in this it's not a, We're not talking about what happened in the court. We're talking about what the FBI took to the court, the application. Did Peter Strzok, was he involved in taking that to the court? Uh, I'm not going to discuss in this setting anything to do with the FISA court applications. Well, let's, let's remember a couple things, Director. And I know you know this. We've, we've all been made aware of this in the last few weeks. Let's remember a couple things about the dossier. The Democrat National Committee and the Clinton campaign, which we now know we're one and the same, paid the law firm who paid Fusion GPS, who paid Christopher Steele, who then paid Russians to put together a report that we call a dossier full of all kinds of fake news, National Enquirer garbage. And it's been reported that this dossier was all dressed up by the FBI, taken to the FISA court, and presented as a legitimate intelligence document that it became the basis for granting a warrant to spy on Americans. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if that actually took place. It sure looks like it did. And the easiest way to clear it up is for you guys to tell us what was in that application and who took it there. Congressman, our staffs have been having extensive interaction with both intelligence committees on our interaction with the FISA court, and I think that's the appropriate setting for those questions. Here's what I think, Director Ray. I think Peter Strzok, head of counterintelligence at the FBI, Peter Strzok, the guy who ran the Clinton investigation, did all the interviews. Peter Strzok, the guy who was running the Russian investigation at the FBI. Peter Strzok, Mr. Super Agent at the FBI. I think he's the guy who took the application to the FISA court. And if that happened, I mean, think if this happened, if you had the FBI working with a campaign, the Democrats' campaign, taking opposition research 
dressing it all up and turning it into an intelligence document and taking it to the FISA court so they could spy on the other campaign, if that happened, that is as wrong as it gets. And you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. You can clear it all up. You can clear it all up for all of us here, all the Congress who wants to know, and frankly, all of America who wants to know. You can clear it all up by release. We sent you a letter two days ago. Just release the application. Tell us what was in it. Tell us if I'm wrong. But I don't think I am. I think that's exactly what happened. And if it did, it is as wrong as it can be. And people who did that need to be held accountable. Congressman, we will not hesitate to hold people accountable after there has been an appropriate investigation, independent and objective, by the Inspector General into the handling of the prior matter. And based on that, I will look at all available remedies, depending on what the facts are when they are found. As to the access to the dossier, that's something that is a subject of ongoing discussion between my staff and the various intelligence committees. There's nothing prohibiting you, Director. Is there anything prohibiting you from showing this committee the what was presented to the FISA court? The, the application you all put together at the FBI that was presented to the FISA court, is there anything preventing you from showing us that? The time the gentleman has expired, the director can respond. I do not believe that I can legally and appropriately share a FISA court submission with this committee. I'm talking about what the FBI put together, not what the court had, what, what you took there, what was the, the process put together, what you presented, what you took to the court. When, when I sign FISA applications, which I have to do almost every day of the week, they are all covered with a classified information cover. So that's part of why Director, we is it likely that Peter it Strzok, Is it likely that Peter Strzok played a gentlemen, part in the application presented to the FISA court? The gentleman's time has expired. However, I do want to follow up on your last response to the gentleman. This committee, the House Judiciary Committee, has primary jurisdiction over the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. Yeah. Uh, so any request for documents Mr. coming uh, to any part of the Congress should include the House Judiciary Committee, and if it uh, uh, is classified in any way, shape, or form, it can be provided to us uh, in a classified setting. But uh, that is information that we are very much interested in, Mr. Chairman, and very much want to receive. Just a question to the Chairman. Yeah, I don't think there's anything prohibiting the FBI from giving us what they used to put together what was taken to the FISA court. I, That's what we're asking for, and there is nothing prohibiting him from doing that. I don't think there is either. The time of the gentleman has expired, however. You care to respond to that, Director Gray? No, I think I've covered it.